with another one. Um, for those who are new around here, I'm Kieran. I'm a recovering gambling addict, and I am just trying to do my bit in spreading the awareness of what addiction can do, in particular gambling addiction, um, and it's all in the hope of helping people out there who are struggling. Um, in this video, I'm going to answer a question again that I do get asked when I'm uh, speaking about my addiction to gambling, um, and that is, what is the most sort of extraordinary lengths that I went to? What are some of the lengths that I went to to, to gamble to obtain money? Um, and sort of questions around that, but in the main, what are the lengths? What did I do to get money? What did I do to gamble? Um, I'll start by saying again, this is not glamorizing what gambling can do it's not you know it, it, in no way am I trying to um, give off that it's easy to do these things so go and do them or anything like that um, I'm just speaking from my experience um, and answering a question that I do get asked quite a bit so I went to so many lengths it's it's probably it, I'm not going to be able to give each one um, I just can't remember. I, I did, I did some horrendous things, which I'm not proud of. And um, I've mentioned before, I do still suffer with the guilt to this day. Um, but I've, I've, you know, wrote a few down that that stand out as lengths that I went to to gamble, which probably show and highlight that the grip that gambling had on me um, and the first one is uh, it, it, when I used to gamble it was always gambling with funds that we didn't really have um, no money left at the end of the month where I can just think right that's gonna help us it was uh, most of the time it was money that we didn't have to gamble um, and certainly against my wife's wishes um, and so with this one it's a small amount but it again it, it, it's it's the length I went to um, so one day I'm sat in a hospital A&E department and I overhear a conversation with um, a nurse with a patient and the patient asked her um, I, you know what do I do I've got no money on me um, to pay for parking and she just said if you go to the intercom and tell them you're uh, been to a &E, they will always let you out without paying the lift the barrier rope and at this time I was having problems with health anxiety so I was visiting the hospital quite a, uh, quite a bit for different tests and things and, and what have you so whenever I needed to go to the hospital I would um, tell my wife that I needed five pounds or ten pounds put in in the bank for, for parking to pay for parking um, at this point I'd still got my card um, and I, I knew if she put a five pound in it's, it's more realistic you know, it's not going to be too much to park for a couple of hours. And I knew a website, a casino that accepted five pound deposits, um, which was Stan James back then. Um, so yeah, what I'd do is tell her that I'm coming out and I need the money putting in so I can pay on the card. Um, but all I'd do is, after I've overheard the conversation between the patient and the nurse, I'd go to the intercom and tell them that I've been to A&E even if I'd not been to A&E and they would promptly lift the barrier and I'd just drive out. The £5 that my wife had put in I would obviously deposit on Stan James and Campbell um, and that's one way it's not a lot of money but it's again opportunistic if you like 
um, it all really in a conversation and then putting it into place to to be able to get more. Um, but again, it, it, when I when I speak about being consumed with gambling, it was always on my mind how I can get money, how I can um, obtain enough cash to make a deposit, even just five pound, like I said, the minimum deposit. Um, so another way I would get funds when um, we'd not really got any money of our own is I would ring uh, banks um, and what I would do is I'd get them it's, it's hard to explain I would have a conversation with them my bank um, which I had two or three banks where I would word things and ask them to do things and try and force them into making a mistake. Um, that's one half of it anyway. And the thing is, if they made the slightest mistake, I would tell them, you know, if they told me some incorrect information that previously had been different information, I would run to the hills with that, make a complaint, exaggerate how it's affected me, speak to the complaints department and they would usually give me 10, 20, 30 pounds in compensation. Um, for the bigger complaints, like I'd ask them to send me a bank card out, they would send it to my address, I would tell them that it hasn't arrived, which it had, and that I'm going abroad, um, I'm desperate for it, or just invent stuff that I'm doing um, where I would need my card and there's no other access for me to get money um, so I'd exaggerate beyond belief the amount of inconvenience it's caused me and, and you know uh, just try and lay on thick to get more money and I remember once booking a, uh, some tickets for a concert and you needed to show your card when you got to the concert that you paid off and so I ordered a card this is all planned out ordered a card, um, told them that it didn't arrive and that I needed to go and see this concert. They finished up having to do a special delivery uh, where they they don't only do that, you know, post one to three days or whatever, one to seven working days, a special delivery and they compensated me, I think it was £100. Um, but eventually I would, as I got more desperate, invent phone calls I'd had with them and when they would try and locate that phone call to listen into it which I'd always asked them to do to, to somehow call their bluff because the first thing they'd say is I'm going to listen to the call um, I would invent um, calls so I'd tell them to go and listen to it and they would then tell me I can't find that call I said well that shows you then it, it wasn't actually in my account was it so he's had me on the phone for 30 minutes waiting to get through and then 20 minutes speaking to him giving my account numbers and he's not even accessed the account and then the phone's gone dead I said you're wasting my time blah de blah de blah so they compensate me again and I'm not proud of it I really am not proud of it um, but that's some of the lengths in that respect with the banks and things and it, it led to one or two banks closing my account now under the we don't feel that we have got the level of customer service that you expect but really that I was a pest I was horrendous and they closed me down and rightly so and I apologize to those banks um, the other thing uh, I've wrote down uh, just that stands out is uh, when I was a lorry driving for a living and I'm really I'm disgusted and I mean truly truly disgusted and I still live with it. it it hurts to this day the guilt that I carry I would drive usually at night um, long distances and I would tell my wife that I'm really really sleepy and I'd put on a 
dreary voice, yeah, yeah, that sort of stuff. And say that I need some money putting in my bank. Um, and I tell her that it's for gambling. And I said that the only thing that would keep me awake at the moment, which isn't actually lying, to be honest, but I wasn't actually sleepy, um, is slotting, you know, having to go on the slots because I'm focused, she put the money in 10, 20, 30 pounds and in her mind it was helping me to wake up to, to you know to come round a little bit and so I'd be safer to drive home. That is that's disgusting. That's horrible. That's that that's making her feel guilty if she doesn't do it I'm worrying about my safety driving home and I do that because I was just consumed by this horrendous addiction <sighs> I'm sorry I, just thinking back I, I'm horrible I was horrible I was really horrible I struggled and write this song to this day with it. I don't. I, I, there's a couple of more, but you know it's. I'm, I'm, it's impacted me. You know, I'm really talking about it, and this is not a feel sorry for me. It's just I'm trying to um, tell you, you know, answer the lengths that I went to because it's asked quite a lot and. Yeah, reliving some of them, it's it's not good. Um, but the, the 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 couple of others that I've got wrote down that sort of stand out is I put the car in for a logbook loan. Um, someone bought us a car, um, and I returned my gratefulness by taking it down to the local loans to go. I think it was and did a logbook loan. They gave me five hundred pounds to keep the logbook. That went in one hour, two hours when I got home. Um, driving around with a car meant to do repayments. I never made repayments. I just, um, I just ignored the letters, and they they said they're gonna come out and clamp them, clamp me. They never did, and eventually the car broke down, and I sold it without the logbook to some dodgy scrap dealer. And got £150, I think, which I gambled straight away. And the other one, which is probably a lot, you know, most common really with gambling addicts, is borrowing. I had untold payday loans. Um, Father in law would pay them off sometimes, quite a lot actually. At one point, I ran up £5,000 in um, gambling. Well, loans to gamble in one day I took out £5,000 worth of payday loans in my wife's name because she had a good credit rating until I messed it up he replaced that money I didn't gamble the replaced money but yeah it's horrendous what I did and uh, borrowing off family telling them that I needed money for bills and things and in actual fact, you know, I was bringing in a good wage, my wife was, but I was just gambling it. And they're the lengths, and, you know, when you talk about the other side of it, non-financial, the, the lengths I went to with gambling in terms of um, sneaking around and things, uh, I'd often uh, sit at the toilet, making out I've got belly ache, you know, for long periods of time, just my wife would be saying, "You need medication, things like that, just to gamble, just to go in there and go into my own world." Um, I'd stand for hours on a bandit when I was younger. Uh, when I was everyone was having a good time, I'd be stood on the bandit, and just different, very secretive ways of gambling. And, I'd, I'd get Jamie Dyson who's been on and told his story and get him to lie to his missus to to 
get money for me to gamble and then somehow I'm paying back and things like that and vice versa. And we've gambled together, we spent a weekend in York where it was meant to be watching snooker, the, the UK Snooker Championship and we, we, I think we left the snooker early because we were just gambling the full weekend together. Um, but yeah, and I remember coming home with £300 I think what we won and I put it in my sock and put it in the uh, behind the bath where my wife couldn't see it and I lost that very very quickly so as much as I'm rambling a little bit towards the end um, I wanted to give a, a little a little glimpse of the back story behind my gambling in terms of the lengths that I went to to do it um, probably on the second half of the video I'm a bit just 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 talking about it it's obviously it's it's not easy and I just want to if I always say it but if you are if you can relate to the some of the stuff that I've done and you do feel you are struggling with gambling um, or even related to alcohol drug addiction or any addiction um, in terms of lengths and things get help please speak to someone I'll put some links in the description below if you want to contact me on Twitter give me a follow and I'll um, respond to your direct messages no problem I'm happy to speak to you um, if you have been through addiction and recovering get in touch come on and tell your story if, if you feel it can help others you know I have no problem in having you on we'll do interviews over zoom you don't have to show your face even it's all to help others not to feel alone and if by me mentioning certain things it helps others that's even better but for now i'll leave you and um yeah i apologize for me how i am but it's just just going back at you know struggle with guilt Thank you.